now that we've seen that there are, you know, the need rather for data here in our programs that we're going to uh, actually design, what we need to do is look at the different kinds of data. So the data types it is that are available to us here in pseudocode. Uh, and for the most part, they're going to be available to you, uh, irrespective of whatever the final development language is that you are going to be developing in. Um, one of the, the simple ones we can point to is one of the elementary data types. This is something you can take for granted for the most part, that it's available everywhere in any language you're going to develop in. Um, and that is the integer. Uh, that is essentially a whole number. Uh, so the number one, the number two, the number one million, those are integers. There is no decimal there. When it is that you need a little bit more of a fine grain number that you need decimals to, um, you can choose a real number. Uh, a real number in most of the other programming languages is going to be called uh, a long, a double, or a float, uh, depending on just how much of a degree of specificity you need on that number, so how many decimal places you need. Uh, for us, we're simply going to call it real numbers. Uh, real numbers, you're allowed to have decimals. So, um, you know, if you think about something like the tax rate from the previous podcast example, uh, we would have, you know, 8.9 is a real number uh, because we have that 0.9 there. Um, so when you need decimal places, you need a real number. Uh, a character is another elementary data type. Uh, that is the the letter A, the letter B, the letter C, the letter capital A, the letter capital B, the letter capital C. Um, all of those are characters. Uh, finally, we have Booleans. Again, this is an elementary data type that is available to you in any programming language. Uh, a Boolean is yes or no, on or off. Um, they are represented here in uh, pseudocode and in most other languages uh, as true or false with a value of 0 or 1. Um, so a light switch is either on or it's off. There is nothing in between. Now for those of you who are trying to squint at it and tell me about a dimmer switch, that's really on. It's just not on very brightly. Um, so booleans are either all yes or all no and there is no middle ground in between there. After this, we have to ask, what happens if we need to have a collection of elementary data put together? So if I have student name one, student name two, student name three, uh, and over time I want to be able to do something with that, I'm going to need a data structure, um, a higher order level of complexity than a simple elementary data type, uh, and something that you know gives me the kind of flexibility I need to take the data that I've either entered into the system, you know, with an interaction of the user, uh, or data it is that I've gotten in um, to the system by reading it in from another file someplace. Uh, and actually, file is one of the data structures we're looking at. Uh, so if you think about a student data file, it's going to have a collection of related records. Um, so it would have things like a student name, a student number, student ID, or, or student number and student ID are the same, aren't they? Uh, but a social security number would be something different. Um, and each one of those individual students in the file would be a record. So if you would think about yourself as a student, um, the data that belongs to you would be in your student record. Uh, so even if you know you kind of conceptualize a file cabinet, um, as a file and then each one of those individual folders as a record you are exactly on track with where you need to be. Um, the last one we're going to talk about here, um, it is on page 9, is a string. Um, we are going to take for granted that strings are collections of characters. Now they can be um, alpha characters, so A, B, C, and they can be numeric characters like 1, 2, 3. Um, the caveat on strings is, uh, when we see them here in pseudocode, uh, we are going to take for granted that there's a lot of really heavy lifting that has to go in the background of working with strings in any other language. So C++ or Java, JavaScript, etc. Strings can be complicated to deal with because oftentimes uh, the lazy developer wants to say, okay, 
enter in a value for something. And instead of saying enter in a real number value, they say enter in a string value. Um, because it gives the developer a little bit more flexibility. That flexibility comes with a penalty. That penalty is overhead on behalf of your developing environment. So if you're in C++ or Java or whatever. So for us, when we are looking at, you know, collecting a, collecting a name, collecting an address, etc., that is going to be a string as opposed to a collection of characters that we don't know how many uh, characters we're going to need. Uh, so the data types primarily we are going to be concerned with in this class are integers, uh, those are whole numbers, real numbers, those are decimals, uh, characters, that's lowercase a or capital A, uh, booleans, that's on or off, uh, a record, that would be your individual record in a file, and a file uh, would be a collection of homogeneous records, and finally a string, one more time, is a collection of characters. That can be alpha characters or numeric characters.